We all know the tale of Hannibal crossing the Alps with his elephants in the Second Punic War, but we bet you didn't know about the time the Romans beat them in the elephant mountain crossing game. After all, Hannibal had to walk through the mountain passes, but the Romans, they did it in style. Let's begin with the setting. But before we talk about Roman warfare, we would like to introduce our modern warfare sponsor, War Thunder. They're a military vehicle combat online game that's free to play for everyone. What's even better is that War Thunder is cross-platform, meaning players on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Xbox One and Series X all play on the same servers. Our favorite thing about War Thunder are the countless historically accurate vehicle types across various countries. There are more than 2,000 of them to be specific, with our all-time favorite being the BT-7 tank because of its remarkable speed. The rich PvE environment combined with realistic physics and sound effects are highly immersive, so click the link in the description and try it out for yourself, with the added free bonus of a premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and a 3-day account boost. It is 169 BC and the Third Macedonian War had been raging on for the past two years. The recent lack of Roman progress had stalled the war effort at the very gates of Macedon, in Thessaly. But now, with Roman reinforcements arriving in Greece, this was about to change. The most notable addition from the reinforcements were several large war elephants added to their ranks. These majestic but terrifying beasts could swing the tide of battle if used correctly but nothing could have prepared them for what they were about to experience. With the forces now assembled for the campaign, the new consul and general Quintus Marcius Philippus came up with a quite unorthodox plan to invade Macedon. Instead of taking the safest route, which was also the most expected, Philippus instead went for an almost suicidal one. He chose to Hannibal his way through the most treacherous pass through the mountains, which were also guarded by 12,000 Macedonians. Undeterred, the Romans miraculously managed to dislodge the Macedonians guarding the pass after a series of alpine skirmishes. But now they had to perform the daunting task of descending the steep mountain, together with baggage, pack animals, and of course, the elephants. We are told that everyone was slipping and falling almost continually, but the most troublesome were the elephants, who kept throwing off the riders and scaring the other animals with their appalling cries. After descending just four miles, everyone wished to turn back to where they started. But the Romans, being Romans, did not turn back. They instead devised a plan to construct a railway system with a platform above it. The Romans would then gracefully load an elephant onto the platform, cut the ropes, and send the beasts sliding all the way down to the next railway system. And this process was repeated for each elephant on every steep slope of the mountain. If the Romans taught us one thing, it's that ancient problems require surprisingly modern solutions. Apart from the fact that they didn't have modern animal rights activists to stop them from traumatizing the elephants. But if the Romans wouldn't have done it, this image would have never crossed our minds as feasible. And surprisingly, we are told the elephants would calmly and quietly slide down on their feet and backs. So maybe they actually enjoyed it. Maybe. After all, we're nowhere near to trying it out in the present, so we will never know. What we do know, though, is that the rest of the army did not enjoy it as much as the elephants. We are told they traveled a total of seven miles that day, and very little of this was done on their feet. They instead rolled off the cliffs in full armor and gear, which was actually as painful and uncomfortable as it sounds. And so, every Roman soldier that day had to ask himself the question, if my centurion rolled off a cliff, should I follow him? And the resounding answer was yes. As General Philippus watched his great Roman army reduced to a big mess of people rolling around in the dust and sliding down on their bums, he concluded that an attack of even a small enemy force right now would be enough to completely annihilate his whole army. But thankfully, no Macedonian appeared to deny the army of their fun. After two days of rolling the men, sliding the elephants, and sleeping on the only flat grounds they could find, the Roman army was finally on flat ground. We could only imagine the surprise of the Macedonian general while sipping on some wine when he catches a glimpse of these majestic and sacred beasts being gracefully slid down the mountain. His confusion and fascination would be interrupted by the realization that days ago, he had assured the king that there was absolutely no way a Roman attack would come from the mountains. Even funnier is the reaction of the Macedonian king to the news, which thankfully has survived through the years. The king was having his bath when news was brought of the approach of the enemy, on hearing it, he sprang in a panic from his seat and rushed out, exclaiming that he was conquered without a battle. Amidst distracted plans and contradictory orders, he sent two of his friends, the one to Pella to throw into the sea the treasures that were stored at Phacus, and the other to burn the fleet. He recalled the Clipiodotus and Hippias and their troops from the places they were occupying, 
and left all the approaches to Macedonia open to the enemy. The king did not consider anything in his retreat, not the fact that the Romans were outnumbered or that they were now trapped between his city and an impassable mountain, or that there was no way that the Romans could now get resupplied and would run out of food in a matter of days. The king simply jumped out of his bath and ran. It would be surprising if he even remembered to put his clothes on before he went out shouting contradictory orders to his men. Roman battles are always very fascinating to study. Firstly, because they always involve impressive constructions, and secondly, because they could happen anytime and anywhere, even during political debates. Living in the 21st century, we know that political debates, if not properly managed, can get very vocal in the blink of an eye. The Romans were no different in this matter too, only that they had a more blunt and brutish approach to handling extreme political debates. In one moment, you could be debating something in a civilized manner, and in another, all hell can let loose in a full-out WWE Royal Rumble match. But enough said, let's begin with our story. In the year 100 BC, there was a voting process for the Agrarian Law of Tribune Saturninus, which aimed to provide land to the poor citizenry and to the veterans of Marius from Numidia and the Cimbrian Wars. But many of the urban voters opposed the bill because they didn't want to live alongside them. The veterans responded by chasing off the opposers from the speaking platform in a classic diplomatic move. But the urban voters also had some moves up their sleeve. They exclaimed that a crash of thunder had been heard during the voting, and as per Roman custom, all official proceedings must be suspended for the day. But the veterans didn't buy it, and urged the proceedings to carry on. Then, in classic Asterix and Obelix fashion, an argument broke out between both sides, which continued to escalate until the urban voters, grabbing their tools of democracy in the form of chairs, clubs, and every improvised object you could think of, proceeded to engage in aggressive negotiations to settle the issue, and all hell was let loose. Soon enough, the urban voters gained the upper hand and drove off the veterans from the assembly area. Those then stopped to think of what to do next. They decided that violence was not the answer, and instead came up with a great diplomatic rebuttal, went to the assembly, and convinced the urban voters to agree with them. The urban voters were so impressed that they agreed to pass the law. Just kidding. These were not a simple mob of armed civilians, these were veterans who had taken part in the War of Jugurtha and campaigned against the Cimbri and Teutones. If there was one thing they knew, it's that violence is always the answer and they were not about to let a bunch of urban dwellers overcome them. And so they armed themselves with more tools of diplomacy in the form of chairs, clubs, and everything they could get their hands on, and charged for the assembly. There they began presenting their rebuttal to the urban voters with such refinement and detail, with such elaborate flow of words and elegant gestures and just motives, that the urban voters listened attentively with tears of empathy flowing from their eyes, and concluded that they ought to leave and let the law be passed. Or in other words, the veterans beat the living daylights out of the urban voters and then passed the law by majority, and received their land grants. This was Roman democracy, very similar to our democracies today except that we evolved very well over the past 2000 years and finally learned to deal with political debates in a civilized manner, with words rather than fists. And besides, politicians are very educated people and always respect the fact that everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Thank God for democracy. Roman soldiers were very brutish in politics, but even more brutish was their sense of humor, and oh boy do we have a story to prove it. Sometimes a display of true manliness and proven valor can force lesser people to change their minds. Clearly this was the intention of Servilius Geminus when he jumped in the defense of Lucius Aemilius Paulus, the victor against Macedon, to address his ungrateful soldiers. The soldiers were angry with Paulus for his authoritarian command and stinginess in distributing the loot, and were trying to boycott the electoral process. Geminus began with a lengthy speech in favor of Paulus, in an attempt to appeal to the common sense of the soldiers. To solidify his points, Geminus stripped himself naked in front of the audience, showing the innumerable scars and wounds on the front side of his body. The man had a record of 23 dueling victories and was quite a warrior but something else caught the attention of the audience. Livy writes that while making this display, he uncovered what ought to be concealed, and a swelling in the groin evoked laughter among those nearest to him. He then concluded, This which you are laughing at I got from sitting on horseback night and day, and I am no more ashamed of this than of my other scars. It has never hindered me from serving the commonwealth faithfully, either at home or on the battlefield, 
As an old soldier, I have often showed this body of mine hacked with the sword to the young ones. Yes, body shaming was very real back then as well, and Geminus really failed to consider the immature and brutish sense of humor of the soldiers. We can say for sure that this incident became gossip material for quite some time. That's all for now, folks. Make sure to watch part 1 if you haven't already. And once again, be sure to support us by trying out War Thunder through the link in the description, and immerse yourself in the intense PvP experience between ground, air, and naval vehicles. Also, let us know what you enjoy about the game. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and check out more of the channel's content. If you wish to support us even further and want to forever engrave your name in one of our videos, consider joining our generous patrons who help us cover the expenses of research and animation. Furthermore, I would like to thank you all for the supportive comments we got on the first video. It seems you guys really enjoy these funny stories of antiquity, and I'm glad to say there are many more, so we can keep the series going. So I hope to see you all in part 3.